Hello, this is Dr. Franz, the Common Sense Doctor, and today we're going to talk about hurricane preparedness. Hurricane season is June 1st to November 1st in Florida, and so it really pays to be prepared. Now, we live in Central Florida where we don't typically get hurricanes, although Hurricane Charlie changed that in 2004, but we do get a whole lot of, um, you know, the outskirts weather. If you live on the coast, either side, anywhere, East Coast, West Coast of Florida, of the United States, wherever. Okay, being prepared is really helpful. And we want to focus a little bit on the children as well. So pay attention to the weather, but don't be obsessed with it, okay? And be sure that you go ahead and start preparing for the hurricane season. So have water on hand, enough for three days for everybody is what the general rule is. And from our point of view, please be sure you have all the teas and homeopathic remedies. At the Fran Center, we do sell kits. Okay, we have our herbaceutical kit. We have our homeopathic travel kit, but we have the home medical kit, which is on our website that you can purchase as well with a handy dandy, nice, clear Fran Center go grab bag. Okay, so you want to have those. You also want to have bandages. You want to have topical antibiotic cream. You know, be prepared for cuts, bruises, okay, splinters, all right, things like that. Be sure you have gloves, tweezers, hand sanitizer, soap. Uh, my book, Common Sense Pediatrics. You want emergency lights, okay? I mean, you know, like the little lanterns, the coal lanterns and things. Um, you need a plan to be able to charge the cell phones. You then want to be sure that you're preparing your children so that they're not terrified. This is a typical occurrence in Florida. And, you know, I mean, the category five, four and fives can be very, very devastating and scary. So you want to just be paying attention like you would for anything. Educate them. Okay. You can certainly share your feelings and concerns, but not be terrified. Prepare a go bag for each child ahead of time. You know, they can have a flashlight in it, their own little medical items, hygiene items, their favorite stuffed animal, their favorite blanket, okay? Learn your child care's disaster plan. Evacuate if you're instructed to do so and um, stay indoors during the hurricane. Hello, okay. <laughs> It's important to keep routines like family meals and bedtime stories consistent because children thrive on routine. That makes them feel safe and secure. And, you know, it, well, I, I couldn't prepare a big meal. It doesn't matter. It's, you know, if you're eating Lunchables, which are kind of disgusting, but if you're eating Lunchables, sit down together and do it. Keep things steady. It gives a sense of safety. Okay, um, listen to your children. Let them voice their concerns so that you can understand how they're feeling and do your best to reassure them they are safe, okay? Because children think also, okay? And, you know, sometimes it's like, don't worry, I'll keep you safe. And they're like, they may still have concerns. How are you gonna keep me safe? These are all great times for reassurance, education, um, seeing them, listening to them, and helping them through this trying time. And if you have to evacuate, you have to evacuate. You know, what happens to our home? Well, we don't know. We'll find out. But what's important? What's important is we're together, okay? Limit media. OMG. Every season when there's a hurricane, it is 24-7 disaster information. It's like, give it a rest. Give us the information. Give us the update. Quit speculating. Quit looking all around the state at everything that could go wrong. Um, just limit your media exposure as well as theirs. Uh, watch for changes in their behaviors their speech, their eating patterns, right? These can be signals that they're more stressed than you realize. So talk to them about how they're feeling. 
If nobody wants to talk about it, silence suggests that it's too horrible to talk about. Everybody on this planet makes up stories in our heads. We all do. Girls, women do it way more than males. Okay. So your children could be making up stories about this when there's silence and nobody's talking about it. It's easier to get things out in the open and to address the fears and concerns in a logical, rational, problem-solving way. And that's important because it also helps develop critical thinking skills. <clears throat> you can even ask your children what concerns they have. You can share your feelings in a constructive way. You know, if your children can write, read and write, and you as well, you can journal your feelings. Lots of evidence shows that as we get it on paper, it helps defuse it. You know, consider ways you can help other people, oh, especially in the aftermath, okay? For other concerns, please feel free to reach out to us at the Friends Center for any help and stay safe. So I hope that this information has been helpful, right? To sum it up, you know, you want to have a, a hurricane plan. You want to have supplies on hand. You want to have medical supplies, herbaceutical supplies, homeopathic supplies, bandages on hand. You want to have enough water. You want to have lights, plan to charge your cell phone. If there's an evacuation plan, that as well, okay? Have a go bag for each child with their special stuff in it. Puts them in control and helps them feel safe. Listen to your kids. Stay indoors during the hurricane. Limit media coverage which winds up being pretty easy if your power goes out, okay? Look for changes in their behavior, speech, eating patterns, talk to them about their feelings. Uh, journal in the aftermath, you know, have a plan for that. How can you help others, right? It's really amazing in, in, in catastrophes and disasters, people really come together to help each other, which really improves our connectedness, our relatability and our sense of control, safety, and security. So this is Dr. Franz, Hurricane Preparedness. I will see you next time. Great.